right. So, so, so now we got to go to the record that, that you guys were alive for, like mm-hmm. really alive for, because I've done way too much talking. Uh, so yeah. let's go to Bad. So Bad obviously came out five years later that we're trying, trying to figure out a way to top Thriller and you can't do it. No, it's, no. Yeah, you can only go so high. Yeah, you, you just, you can't do it. And then of course, oh, in there, by the way, there was the obligatory money grab from Motown, of course, the 18 greatest hits. And Farewell My Summer Love, who could forget? That yeah. masterpiece of an album, Farewell My <laughs> Summer Love. <laughs> yeah. It had hits on it, like, and, and there was a lot. Yes. I got nothing. That's um, all you got. That's how many they had. <laughs> the song oh, Farewell boy. My Summer Love is meh and it was remixed because it needed to sound like it, it was done this century but right <laughs> not good it got some play in dc but nothing else did um a horrible little record um anyway um yeah moving on to bad gosh there was a lot of them um, anyway moving on to bad from 87 um what do you what are your memories of bad when it came out and Okay, now this one I was old enough to remember, like clearly remember. I had to be 87, I had to be like eight or something, but I very clearly remember the hysteria around it because it's like, oh, we're getting a new thriller. So this is a big, 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 big deal. And while it's not thriller good, it's still pretty freaking good. And of course, we'll and we'll talk about it, but bad, the actual title track, like that was. That was the song in middle school, high school. So I mean, high school, um, elementary school. So yeah. the fervor yeah. around that and, and the leather clad Michael and the rock feel and everything, it was very timely, fit the time. And there was just so much momentum on his side when it came to that, that everybody was bought in. So we checked yeah. out the album and even older, like, because I can be a little bit more, um, you know, critical in my taste. Yeah, it's not as good as the other two that we've discussed, but it's still freaking good. If it came out today, it'd be album of the year, what like a runaway selection. So incredible, incredible piece of work. Still one of his best, not his actual best, but masterful. Part of the '80s, yeah. another '80s classic. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Fair. Fair. Go ahead, Fair. Jerry. What you got? So I was three when this album came out, but even a couple of years, even a couple of years after the album had come out, they were still releasing singles for this album. So I do remember being four or five and seeing his music videos on TV. And I remember seeing Leave Me Alone. Um, and he's like in great video. He, he's like, in a he's like oh, on a oh, boat. Oh. Was it? Yes. He's like on a boat or something. He's like riding towards this, he's, madness. It was beautiful. Yeah. And he's riding towards this mouth and his mouth is like open and closing. And then you got like, like, like iguanas on the side of them, or I something. thought I it was weird as crap. I don't know. I don't know you. what was going on. Oh, I I'm, loved I'm, it because <laughs> it was weird. It's like a fever dream. I loved. And it. I'm just sitting here like <laughs> I'm, I'm a kid, but I remember myself saying to myself like, "What the? I'm like, what am yes, I watching?" That's what I was like. I was like, "This is like the weirdest thing in the world." It's like, how are they doing this? I was more. Yeah. Like, wow. You know, I'm. I'm like, should I be scared? Well, should I be? Uh, should I be entertained? I don't know what to be right now. Like, I don't know what this is. You know. I don't know what to be. <laughs> yeah, and I then it's like. And this is literally like my, one of my, my probably my earliest memory of, of Michael Jackson. I remember that video, and I also remember Speed Demon. Um, for whatever reason, this video doesn't get talked about a lot, but he like turns into like a rabbit or some kind of rabbit or something. Yes, like that. He, I and he's being that, yes. and he's being chased by the paparazzi. Mm-hmm. And I know the video yeah. probably got to be like ten or fifteen minutes long, but you know, as a kid, the video felt like it, like like a two hour sure, video yeah. for us all. For all, you know, I'm just like, this is like the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. But I can't stop watching though. You know, it's like it's like a movie. Like I'm watching a movie. You know, and I'm five years old, four or five, and you know, hey, it looks like a cartoon. Cool, I'm gonna sit down and watch this. But this is the weird. This is the weirdest thing in the world. I've never seen nothing like it in my life, ever. He's just being chased by these people, and I have no idea what's going on. All I know is he just man to turn into a rabbit. I'm like, is this like Roger Rabbit's cousin? Like, I don't know what this is. But this is really cool though. You know what I mean? And it was just, it was the most amazing thing in the world. I've never seen nothing like it. Haven't seen anything like it since. Um, and that's just the power of, of Michael, man. Even as a kid, he just grabs your attention. He, like he, he, man. Like those are my probably my two earliest memories of Michael Jackson: Speed Demon and uh, I Just Leave Me Alone. Those be two music videos I remember seeing vividly as a kid. I still remember that to this day. You know? I love that you both keep mentioning how old you were, just to make me feel extra old. Thank you. I'm just uh, <laughs> oh, me too. I'm not yes. I'm <laughs> but yeah, man, it's just. Um, yeah, I'm bad. I, like I said, another, it's almost like Thriller. Like it, he was every, he was oxygen. He was matter. He was everywhere. 
Like there was no escaping it. Um, by the time I went to Disneyland when I was six, you know, they had a movie, Captain Captain EO or whatever yeah, it was Captain called. Captain EO, yeah. 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 <clears throat> you know, I mean, there was there was no escaping Michael. Like I said, by then he had the arcade out, you know. Um, you know, so yeah, it was just you know, um it's like gravitational pull, man. It just pulled you in. That's the you thing know? I think that's so hard to relate to so many years down the line. It's and and you both of you were so correct. Mm-hmm. I mean, you keep saying he was matter. He was. Yeah. I mean, after Thriller came out, there was no part of international culture that wasn't touched in some way by Michael mm-hmm. Jackson. Yeah, because didn't do, kids yeah. in Botswana that were wearing jackets with zippers on them. Yeah, because yeah, didn't you know? didn't Thriller like go number one in like twelve different countries or, or something went like that? Went everywhere. Yeah, it just you know? jaded. Just every, literally, that's not hyperbole. Like it went number one, absolutely everywhere it could go number one. And another thing I remember about about this time frame is I remember seeing um, a, a video. I guess I don't, I don't, I don't think it was like a music video, but it was basically like videos of Michael's tours. Kind of somebody put together like a highlight package. I don't remember what it was from or where I saw it from, but I'm literally seeing grown men in like different countries, like Russia or China, crying and passing out. Yeah, you never yes. seen nothing like that ever. Yes. Like, what? What is this? Yes, that's why yeah. I will always say, as much as someone likes their current star until they're passing out at their concert, yeah. crying at the mere sight, you're not Michael. I'm sorry. I'm like, what is it? I'm like, mom, why these men? Why are these men crying for? I'm like, this is the most. This is the most insane thing I've ever seen. Even to to this day, a man making another grown man pass out. Yes, you you, you a bad boy if you're doing that. You a bad boy <laughs> if you're doing that, man. That hey, that. Boy there is power like you can't even imagine like i remember um dallas austin did an uh, interview on uh, vlad and he was saying man like michael is is is, is un of this world he, he has relationships with countries that the u.s doesn't even have relationships with yep. like yeah. that's just the best way to describe michael in a nutshell it's a good point yeah yeah like when, when chris brown can go into like north korea or russia and sell out and sell out a, a hundred thousand you know seat stadium or whatever he ain't touching michael Exactly. I don't okay, care. Maybe not North Korea, but you know what I'm. You get what I'm saying, though. He can backflip all day long, but right. until they're crying in North Korea, so right? Saying, you're not Michael. Yeah. It's just it's and again. I mean, we talked about this already, but it's it's really only the passage of time and the new generation that just doesn't. They just don't know. It's yeah, not their fault know. that they don't know, but they just right. don't know. So yeah, which is the point of this whole thing. But you know, it just there was nothing, no part of pop culture that wasn't touched. Yeah. by michael jackson there's never been anything like that you turn on the tv he was there mm. you listen to the radio he was there you go to a magazine stand he's there yeah he was he was inescapable in every sense you go to a toy store there are action figures of him right uh you know the, the fake jackets with zippers on them uh, mm-hmm. that, that were made of vinyl i believe at the time um but it just it, the glove was everywhere like the yeah. glove the glove was almost a separate recording act Yes, it, it, it was. It's the yeah. glove and the socks. Like they were their own thing. It just it had its own. It's like Bobby Bobby Caldwell in his hat, yeah. like, but but much more so, like a hundred times more than that. Everybody yeah. had to have the glove and got their mom to put sequins on the glove so it looked yeah. like mom's. Like it just it, he touched every possible piece of pop culture. And while this is happening, bad comes out. Mm-hmm. While this is, he's already destroying everything in his path and already has everybody in a tizzy. And in the middle of this, that comes out. Right. And how often do you see an album come out five years after and he just picks up Robert left off at? He waited well, five years to release his album. But so, well, and a lot of that was paranoia too. He just couldn't yeah. figure out how to follow Thriller. Quincy yeah. couldn't either. It exhausted them to try. Yeah. And basically, Quincy's response was write all the songs yeah him and quincy didn't him and quincy uh, co-produce or, or co-write everything yeah okay it was, it was a co-production but more than anything it was just with with very few exceptions michael wrote all the songs yep, yeah pretty much but i think he came in there with i think i think what like 50 or 60 tunes and then they whittled it down you know to the best few and then they bought a couple and two of the ones they bought were good and the other one was trash in the hot sun um but it, it's not it wasn't it's not perfect nothing is perfect we talked about that already but but all of the things that he wrote the things that he came in with 
came with some really good songs, like right. really strong songwriting from Michael that nobody was expecting. I mean, his songwriting mm. carries the record. And that's one of the things that made it so different, just on a very basic level. And songs that have stood the test of time when you look back at it. Look how much yeah. of stuff is sampled, um, referenced. Man, yeah. this stuff still to this day resonates. And that's, we don't talk enough. I know you mentioned earlier about Michael's vocals. I don't think we talk enough about his pen. Yeah, we, you're right. We don't. Well, because this is when his pen really came to life. It was right, here. Yeah. I mean, we already had flashes of brilliance with Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. It's like we didn't think he could. We knew he right. could. But here was, this is the way, this is the way that the follow-up could be different. This is yeah. the thing you could do that's different from Thriller. We said it already. Yeah. Just get you to write all the songs. This, this will be your expression, which is how we then get, you know, Leave Me Alone and uh, speed demon and the kind of more paranoid sounding things. This is what his paranoia began to take over. Thank you, Pepsi commercial and paparazzi. Yeah, yeah. this is basically um, this is Michael. Yeah, this is pretty much Michael. You know, after the plastic surgery and the, the hair and all that stuff. This is this is Michael when he. Yeah, that's another thing too because he was in full body dysmorphia by then. Yeah, because you know? I mean already on off the wall he looked like Jackie. Because uh, they both had nose jobs by then, so they both look. They just they very much look the same by then. By the time you get to, by the time you get to Thriller, he's starting to look different, starting to act a bit different, a little more closed in, a little more introverted. Yeah. And by the time you get to Bad, he looks utterly different. Right. And, and you're just, right. I hadn't put two and two together, but this is also around the time where you started hearing the whole, you know, Michael Jackson's whole public persona started getting a little weird and kind of yeah. there came to be more pushback behind that. And that's something that as a young person, I started to hear yeah. more and more and more. So that's a good point that it totally forgot. Yeah. About. It, it's funny because I remember um, my dad showed me a um, picture of Michael before, before, before everything. And I was like, that's Michael. Yeah. You know, as a kid, you yeah. know, and, and then, you know, and even to this day, I still wonder like, why did he do this stuff? Like he didn't have to do none of that. Like he, he was sick. There was nothing, there was nothing wrong with the way this man looked. There was there was nothing at all wrong with the way he looked. But that's know? how body dysmorphia works. It's not yeah. even about that. It's how all those dis dis uh, all those diseases work. We don't have to spend too much time on this, but it's like that's how yeah. anorexia nervosa works and how yeah. bulimia works and all of those diseases. Like they fool you into thinking that you don't look good enough, right? And then you compound that with whatever may have happened in his personal life prior, which has been well documented. Yeah. Yep. You put those two things together and it's like, well, of course he's got body dysmorphia. It's obvious. And he had so much money and so much power that no one said no. You know, and I can I can kind of understand why he's why he I understand why he went off the rails the way he did, because like I said, when you're the most recognizable when you're the most recognizable person on the planet, I mean, there's 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 nowhere to there's nowhere to escape that there's there's no safe space for you to go to without somebody wanting a piece of you. And it just drives you crazy. Like, I don't understand. How, you can't function like that. You're, nobody's meant to be that. Nobody's meant to be the center of attention like that. I don't think like you can't handle that much attention, you know, and, that, no. and you, it, just, it just drives you up. It just drives you crazy. Like I can I, I can see why he kind of why he went off the way he did, you know, and, Absolutely. you know, that's why that's why it's so impressive when you do see guys or just not to, not to really go off, but you see a guy like Michael Jordan, he's able to kind of keep it together the way he did, way, way he did, you know being as successful as he was because i'm like how do you do that like how do you stay how do you stay sane after accomplishing that much when everybody wants a piece of you when everybody loves you when nobody tells you no like how do you stay normal you know and that's reflected in a lot of these songs on this album when you yeah, think about is. the things Liberian that are yeah. between that leave me yeah. alone i mean man in the mirror yeah. all of this stuff is things that he has yeah. kind of been coding in and this is his yeah. opportunity to get it out yeah, man, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't imagine having that much. No matter where you go, man, like you go to Mars, and aliens are gonna recognize you there. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. where can you go? You know. Well, then there's even just the basic point of like, like when we go to work, our reward is the paycheck. Mm -hmm. You're right. When musicians go to work, and I, I was in a group a long time ago, it, it, it doesn't matter. The only way <laughs> I can relate is in terms of this. There's something about standing on a stage when you're done doing whatever it is that you're doing. In my case, it was singing with others in a vocal group and standing there, you're standing on a stage and you're getting this. Yeah. There's something very weird about how that energy used to feel coming at me. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's difficult to explain, but it it blows you up in a very unnatural way, and it mm-hmm. makes you feel, even though the feeling was very fleeting for me, it it makes you feel like you're bigger than you are. It's like you're being filled up with gas. Hence the mm-hmm. phrase "gas in a mug." Like that's where that right. comes from, because that's what it is, and it right. messes with your head for a little while. And it's like coming down from that is very, very difficult. Um, and so you can just, and this is just me on like my little level from way back whenever, but you add that, add like a million times more of that to Michael in a stadium getting this. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> just the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. What, what must, just that alone what yeah. that must have done to his mind. Yeah. And how do you come to it's That's why so many musicians give into drug abuse and alcoholism because yeah. they have to find a way to come down. Yeah. And that's the only way they can do it. And with him, who knows how it manifested, who knows how ugly that really got for him trying to reconcile <laughs> and, and all of this and trying just, to reconcile the fact that I'm, I'm, wait, I'm a human being like, I, I just wish somebody, whether it be Quincy or whoever it was that was in a circle of people that he did trust, like just told him, Michael, just go away for a year or two. Just take a break. Don't write nothing. Don't sing nothing. Just 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 go away for two years. Just just, you know, just just take a break, man. I mean, and maybe they did. I mean, yeah, I know there's true. pressure that they tried and but there's yeah. going to be internal pressure on him. I mean, we can. I don't want to go back into the, the stuff that was implanted on him from childhood and what yeah. he went through with Joe, but he's is always going to be pressure to be Michael. So right. he's got to always be on. He's yeah. dealing with all the stuff that Ed was saying, but then he's got to deal with these tabloids calling him wacko Jacko. I remember all of that. Yeah. So you got all these bombarding you, man. It's, it, it's incredible that he lasts as long as he did. Yeah. yeah. He never knew life without that pressure. Nope. When would yeah. he ever have known it? Yeah, because he's because I mean, I mean, he was what eleven when Jackson Wait, Five hit the scene, and they were nine. And he, yeah, and, nine. and they were. Um, I mean, they, did you imagine being a kid and then all of a sudden you got Barry Gordy, you know, hyping you up? You got Diana Ross, Marvin, your tour of Diana Ross, Marvin Gaye, and Smokey Robinson, and then and now you know here you are, 15, 20 years later, you're still on top of the world. I mean, yeah, you're right. There's no normalcy there. You know, there's no. nothing. You know having a nonsensical level of success as a kid back to back number ones, because at that point when they were with Motown, all the, what was the, what was the edict? Um, all of the Supreme records had to be, had to go to number one. They had to, there was no choice. Yeah. And the Jackson songs also had to go to number ones and all the temptation songs had to be top fives. That was the yeah. edict for Motown at that point. And so they actually got away with all of that, though. Like, it actually worked. So he's yeah. already had this unreal level of success at nine. Yes. Yeah. Before your cerebral cortex is even fully formed, he already knows what it's like to be a superstar in a group and to be the one that everybody's paying attention to. That level of pressure is inhumane at any yeah. age, let alone when you're nine or ten. Yeah. Yeah. And then we question why, like, how did this happen? How did folks get there? How did, how then, why didn't anybody stop them? Like, they were too busy pushing. They were reaping the reward. He had this unreal level of, of like, pressure to meet it. And mm-hmm. then, then, and we sit back today and we celebrate the albums as we should, as he would want. But then just thinking back on some of it. And as I said, this album, a little bit of dangerous too, is like when you really started to see the pressures of the world shaking him and it was coming yeah. out in the music. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Okay, so 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 back to the record here. So I'm going to do this to you again. The same thing I did to uh, same thing I did with Off the Wall. Your favorite song off of Bad Ed. Oh my gosh. Um... Yeah. I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like they're different levels. As a kid, it was bad. Yeah. Um. At one point, it was smooth criminal. But then, like, really recently, like in the iPod era, like when I was rocking the iPod everywhere, it kind of became Dirty Diana. I still am, too. I got a hookup in the car. I'll still play it in the car. It might be Dirty Diana. But between those three, like, I, they just represent different points in my life. Because, again, I remember this album very clearly as a child. It's not like the early ones we've talked about where I remember bits and pieces or listening to it like we're 10 or 11 after they had already kind of made their impact. 
but like in the era, like in the immediate era. So my, my memory is a little bit stronger as far as the nostalgia, but it's gotta be bad. It's gotta be smooth criminal or it's gotta be dirty. Diana. I, I'll lean toward bad just because that's the earliest memory, but I don't know. This is tough. The stuff yeah. you like Weird Al, don't you? That's why. That's what it is. Weird, Weird Al is pushing it over the edge. Weird Al was that dude. <laughs> Y'all might not know it now, but he was that guy. I'm his paradise. I'm his paradise. I'm his paradise, baby. Paradise, yes, yes. Yeah. And white yeah. and nerdy. He's got some joints. Yeah. He does. I, I no shade to Weird Al. Weird Al is criminally underrated in terms of just level of talent. Right. So. An incredible, incredible writer on his own, great arranger, great player. Yes. He's all of those things. He could be taken very seriously. There's a reason why he's lasted. Um, so, okay. So, Dre, your turn. Favorite song off of Bad? It's either got to be Li- Librarian Girl or, or Dirty Diana. Um, okay. uh, those, those two I go back and forth on. Um, I don't like I'm Bad. Not, not, not because I hate the song, but I hate what the song could have been. And you know what I'm getting at, right? Say it. I don't yeah. know. The greatest duet. Not, the, the greatest I collaboration the of all. I was waiting for somebody else to do it. Go. The greatest. The, the greatest collaboration of all time. We missed out on Michael and Prince. And that was supposed to happen on Bad. Yes, yes, we, I remember did, this did story. It. And so, ever since I heard that story, now I don't like that song anymore. Oh yes, I heard this story. That was, and that and was Prince's was. reason for not doing it. Yes. Oh, the the oh, your butt is mine. Basically, your butt is mine. He was like, I don't want that butt is mine. No, but you know what though? Truthfully, I don't think Prince was going to do the song anyway. Regardless, he probably Probably not. I mean, him and Michael had this weird, strange rivalry that started at the the James Brown concert back in what eighty three or something like that, and you know he fell. (laughs) If you've never, if if, if you guys are watching, you guys have never seen this. Go look up the footage. James Brown had a concert. He calls up Michael and Prince on the stage. Oh, no. uh, he calls up Michael first. Michael does a little set, and he calls. Then Michael tells James, "Hey, man, Prince is here, man. Call him up." And Prince is completely unprepared. Still kills it though, but you know, Prince is being the perfectionist that he is doesn't like what he did, and he tries to swing off of a, right. uh, off of what is it a light uh, a light pole or something like that? It was a lamp post. But it was a prop, and the thing yeah. falls off the stage with Prince on it. The most hilarious. This is funny, super oh, funny. No. It's so good. Well, I mean, there's it's been not- beef ever since. Yeah. Yeah. There's rumors of Prince trying to run down Michael in the street afterwards. You know, it's all kind of <laughs> all kind of weird things. Man, but yeah. But yeah, I, I still get mad when I think about that. Like, what could have been? You know, like that. That would have that that right there would have blew everybody's mind. Michael and Prince. I mean, Mr. Thriller, Mr. Purple Rain yep. coming together to make a song. I mean, that that would have been something. You know, I mean, Prince is right though. The record didn't need him. The the record still went, you know, quadruple no, no, no. platinum or whatever it went. But you know, to this day, I still get salty when I think about that. Like, man, that that could have been Michael and Prince together. You know, but well, and the fact that Prince wasn't there probably allowed Michael to really cut loose on the vocal because he did again. Yeah, in yeah. One of those tunes. It's like it's it it's bad. Is not my favorite thing on the album, but in terms right. of vocal. Dude, he's he's blowing on that song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really high in those choruses. You know, there's some range there because he's getting kind of low at the last part of the at the last chorus too. You know, yeah, he's, he's going for it. And would he have really cut loose like that if it was a duet? Probably yeah. not. There would have been room for it. So, I mean, the fact that Prince wasn't there allowed, facilitated this really incredible vocal performance, of which, yeah. frankly, on the album, there are many. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But certainly with that song. So, okay. So, so for me, if I had to pick my favorite off the album, I'm going in a totally different direction. I'm picking the duet. Uh, and no, not the Stevie duet. Get your mind out of the gutter. I thought you were so, doing yeah. the Stevie duet. Oh, no. Good Friends no. or whatever. Yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> Just I like that song. I do too. I actually do too. We'll we'll, we'll get there in a minute because it, it, it will be my pleasure. But it, <laughs> but no, I'm talking about I Just Can't Stop Loving You. That song came out before the record did. Um, at first when I heard it, I'm like, I know this is a, I know cerebrally this is a duet. Mm-hmm. Who the heck is Saida Garrett? Like it took me a second to figure out where she was because they were blending together so beautifully. Mm-hmm. It was hard to tell to my young ears where one stopped and the other started. Of course, now I know, and we all we can all quote you chapter and verse on it now. But at the time, I really didn't know. And the cool thing too is it wasn't it wasn't one of those duets done the way they do them now, or even the way they did some of them then, like on my own was done this way where they, 
you know, one vocal was cut here and another yeah. was cut there. And then they'd send the tape back to the first person who'd fix a few lines and then back to the second person to fix a few lines. It wasn't done transcontinentally. They yeah. were literally standing there with each other at the same microphone, just blowing pre auto tune. None of that either. They yeah. were just going for it. And it feels like that. I just think it's an absolutely fantastic duet. They both sang the fool out of it. The lyric absolutely. is really nice. It's Michael Jackson composition entirely. Saida was not supposed to be the one to sing on it. She got the shock of her life. But yeah. She went in there and lit it up and established herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I hate that it didn't evolve into a career for her, like a real female solo artist career for her because it should have. It was yeah. that good on it. I love that song. Love it, love it, love it. Absolutely. So, okay. This will be fun. You already know what I'm going to say. The worst one. What's the worst thing on bad for you, Ed? Oh, the worst thing. Y'all are going to kill me because, again, different memories for different times. Mm. The song that I didn't like at the time the Liberian girl. I, I didn't Killing like. Me, man. I didn't okay. like. I, I I like it now way, yeah. way 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 more. Yeah. But I didn't like that. And Man in the Mirror was just okay. Like those are the two songs that I was like, I don't <laughs> know about these. So yeah. those were probably my back then my least favorite. Today, man, this is so tough because I, there are no bad songs here. <laughs> I will say oh, I listen to Speed uh, Demon the least. I listen to Speed Demon. Fair, fair. You know what's funny is I remember the video more than I remember the song, to be honest with you. With oh, Speed it, Demon. I remember the song, so it must have gotten a little bit of VA radio yeah. play, but it was like, it did. I didn't hate it, but it was like, yeah. Where's Dirty Diana? Yeah. That song right there, man. I've been speculating about what that song is really about. But that's a story for another oh, there time. There have been I many rumors over yeah. the years. Oh, many. So very many. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so worst thing on the record for you, Dre? You know what? I'm not really sure if there was a song on here that I really disliked. Um, no, I'm, I'm really, I'm dead serious. But there wasn't a song that I loved as much as I did on, on Thriller, if that makes any sense to you. Um, I guess if I had to pick one, I guess it would have to be Just, just Good Friends. Um, mm hmm and, and I hate saying that because Steve Wonder is my all-time favorite artist, but that, that particular song doesn't pop the way the other ones do. But there really isn't a song on this that I dislike or hate or, or skip. You know what I mean? Um, it, yeah. So I can't, I can't really say that I hate that song, but I guess it's my least favorite of the, of the 11 on there. Because I feel like Michael and Stevie coming together, it, it should have been more than that. You know what yes. I mean? If that makes sense. Uh, I agree have, with that. I, I like you know the what I mean? song, but I do agree with it. Yeah, I mean, you're talking two icons, two legends, you know. Yes. Um, but Steve, Steve wanted not just being a uh, great musician, but being a great songwriter as well. And I feel like it should have been more than what we got. Yes. Um, but maybe that was the point, though. Maybe it wasn't supposed to be more than that because you had everything else on the album. I, I don't know what the mind. I don't know what the, the mindset was going into that, but I don't even remember if that was released as a single or not. Was that released? Was that a it single? Wasn't. And that's no. and that's probably no, why. No, no way. You know, <laughs> yeah so that and maybe they came into a thing hey this is just gonna be a, a, a album track a filler track or something so maybe that's why it wasn't what it was supposed to, you know why did why it wasn't better i mean that's the only thing i can think of because when you have two guys as talented as, as legendary as that yeah that 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 should that should have been a song that people talked about for decades to, to come you know so yes and most don't even remember it yeah exactly like they don't remember that even happened so yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's absolutely the one that sticks out the least. That's absolutely my pick. So it was yeah. written by the same people, the same guys that gave us What's Love Got to Do With It, uh, Terry Britton and Graham Lyle. Mm -hmm. And they wrote a bunch of, they wrote a lot of, uh, a lot of Tina Turner's things back then. Yeah. Like a lot of uh, uh, typical male. Um, uh, yeah, there were a bunch of them. It, it doesn't, it yeah. doesn't matter. But, um, but that, Dre pretty much said it. Like you've got Stevie Wonder, you've got Michael Jackson, not only are they great singers, but they're both excellent writers, especially Stevie. Yeah. Why are we going to the store for a song for Stevie Wonder? They don't, you don't have to do that. Like there's no yeah. need to grab that. I don't hate the song. I really don't. It's just that it isn't good enough. It's not yeah. good enough for them. They deserve better than that. Quincy has even said, he's like, that's the one I missed on. He said, I got it wrong. Yeah. I imagined it one way and it didn't work. 
Yeah, because Stevie was still fairly relevant in the late 80s. He was yeah. still kind of, yeah. yeah, he was still young. He was 37, 38. I mean, yeah. So He could have written something better. He, ga- he already gave up. I can't help it. He could yeah. have come up with something better. He wrote better songs after that, too. Right, like, yeah. His, his sense of melody hadn't left him. His chordal, his chordal abilities hadn't left him. Like, get Stevie to write the song, or better yet, get them to collaborate. Yeah. Come up with this incredible song. Like, this should have been, like, just as, as Dre said already, this should have been, like, that song on the record. Like, the yeah. one that you never forget. Yep. And yeah. instead, it's... No one's forgotten. It, yeah, it's it's basically just a footnote on the record. Yeah. So, yeah, it just but the record as a whole has no apologies to make. I mean, it's it's it was it was done, you know, back in 1987, which was kind of the beginning of the Synclavier era. Mm-hmm. So, like everything is on Synclavier. Um, and and go ahead. I was gonna say, there's no traces of off the wall on this record either. No traces whatsoever. Yeah, not at all. No, nope, yeah. not at all. This is the really the evolution, like for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a whole other sound, and the whole thing was basically just done in a box with Synclavier and Fairlight. Yeah, because um, Fairlight was such a big deal back then too. I mean, there's I'm looking at the credits now just to kind of refresh myself. Real drums do show up. John Robinson was the drummer. I was trying to think of, and I couldn't come up with it. He's so good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but Bruce Swedean is back again, you know, to do the engineering because that's just Quincy Jones and Bruce Swedean, of course. Um, um, yeah, but a lot of it is just a lot of it was done in a box yeah. and it sounds like it. And that was just the sound at the time. I mean, if yeah. it, done it, another time, it wouldn't have lived in a box the way it does, but 1987, yeah. there you go. Everybody yeah. was doing it that way. You know, everything was done in a box with Synclavier and synth bass and drum machine. And mm-hmm. So, so goes this record too, but it's still, even at that, I mean, the record has no apologies to make the thing still sold 11 million copies here. Yeah. So, Good Lord. 11 uh, million right? cost. 35 total. 35 million total. Could you imagine 35 million being a letdown? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Can you imagine? <laughs> and it was considered a letdown. Yes. <laughs> so, like, how can you, like, like you, you look at Usher or Chris Brown or, or whoever you want to compare to Michael, 35 million wasn't even Michael's best day. Not at all. That That's a billionaire waking up feeling like a million bucks instead of a billion bucks. How many people become millionaires in their life? That's very few exactly yeah. exactly and that's still 35 million 35 million like people need to let people need to really sit back and let that sink in like michael was disappointed by 35 million well but then you also need to look at the promotional budget for a record like that too because this would have been a flagship album for epic this would have been the record that put epic in the black that year mm. um, it was it's like it's like the Christmas season is to retail. So Michael Jackson records were to record label, to Epic at that point. Right. And that was the record that was going to, Epic could make all kinds of mistakes throughout the year. He enabled Epic to sign artists that were just like passion projects. Yeah. He allowed them to go into the studio and make artistic <laughs> records because they knew if his record was coming out that year, that the sales from his record would justify it, would make everything right. okay. That's yeah. the artist that Michael Jackson was. He literally yeah. saved the record business. Yeah. So even yeah. though this is considered a failure, yeah. I mean, to anybody else, it'd be the greatest thing that ever happened. Exactly. It and, and that's what thriller. And that's what makes Michael the greatest because because a lot of people have never reached Michael's failures. You know. No. And but that's and I, but that's the thing. If you look at the, if you and if you look at Michael Jackson, like the difference here is that other artists go in knowing what that touchstone record is. Right. And that they're never going to do better than it. So they just try to make records that satisfy them and that sell yeah. them. Michael was never this way. Yeah. Michael always wanted to, yeah, okay, I know that's Thriller, but I could do better than that. Yeah. True. I can do better than that. And he never, but that's how we got Thriller in the first place. Because anybody would look it off the wall and go, <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. That's a, you, that's a yeah, very good point. It, bro. Like, yeah, 20 and, million copies is nothing to scoff at. So nothing. But he yeah. st- but he was like, no, I can do better than that. And yeah. then he did. Like that mindset is what created Michael Jackson's whole thing anyway. Yeah. And he was yeah. never not that way. And so yeah. when a record like that would when his record would get ready to come out, Epic was like, they would throw all their money at the budget, throw all mm-hmm. their money at the promo budget to make sure everybody knew that it was coming out. Giant life-size things on the side on billboards everywhere on every talk show imaginable. They blow millions and millions of dollars 
on the promotional budget to get the record to sell and they get it all back and then some every yeah. time it never yeah. failed well that never it didn't go so well <laughs> for principle it failed there but oh that was that's years removed i mean yeah